coffee. Looks like it might pour. Guys, I moved some stuff out of the garage today to get some work done, specifically on the four door purple case swap Integra. Had a little coffee made up right now and it might rain. So unfortunately, we might not get too much work, but I'll cut together whatever we are able to do work-wise and um, install some parts on the K-Swap Integra. Now, it's been a, a weird past couple weeks. I've been waiting on parts for the four-door as well as on the coupe red Integra. For the K-Swap Integra, we have a couple other trinkets that just came in. So radiator I mocked up, made a little coolant hose down there, just a custom deal. Need to get a sharp 90 coolant hose for the top right there. Got our Acuity TPS. Um, sensor right there it's one of the better ones for k-series as the other ones tend to have issues especially with close placement to heat like these have and we have some hybrid goodies that we can put in today now i've been mocking up the ac kit from hybrid and i'll do an in-depth video on that soon but for today we really wanted to focus on the shifting of this car we wanted to do this under center console shift box and this is going to go literally seamless with all the interior we want to keep this thing close to stock or close to functional interior as possible. So we're gonna be ripping out all those guts and showing you exactly how to install this, especially for an automatic car. But this will also apply for a five speed OEM car if you're working with that. Uh, first things first, we're pretty much gonna start dissecting in here. We have to remove this center console and all of its guts, make sure that we have a nice clean access to this area. This whole mechanism is gonna get removed. Um, obviously we don't need this being that we're converting to a k-series car and stick shift rather than keeping an automatic and um, yeah this is all going to get ripped out and we'll be putting that shifter in little kick panel comes off right there a couple more phillips Ugh, it's kind of gunky down there gonna have to do some cleaning but that panel comes off relatively easy two phillips heads that go attached to that bracket and then two phillips heads that go under that little panel that comes off oh man this is full of little trash down there good thing we're doing this because we're cleaning up a lot as we go thing right there we'll come back to this and we're exposed with all of this now when going five speed to manual there are a couple things that you have to do with the wiring harness and you can go ahead and just google for your chassis specific what needs to be done and what needs to be jumped uh, in this case we're going to do that off camera but we are going to be removing this whole assembly right here so it basically has a couple mounting nuts right there and then a few more hardware pieces all around this bracket you wanna go ahead and disconnect these wires as well as remove this whole assembly. You can give yourself a little bit more room by removing the Phillips heads that go here and here, allowing this to swivel and accessing the nuts that were on those studs. And this whole assembly starts to get easier to move around and you can start to wiggle it out. On the bottom of the car, there are kind of six bolts that you have to get to. Beneath this section, there's one, two, three, four studs that protrude with 10 millimeter nuts on them. And then over here, there's a bracket that holds this cable in place. You have to remove that as well. Um, and yeah, I cut the exhaust last time I was down under here, so it doesn't look too good. But yeah, once that's loose, then you can go to the top and continue to pull that shifter assembly out. In my case, I had already cut the cable from connecting to the engine and trans when I pulled the swap. So that literally pulled right out. You can go ahead and throw this out. Don't have a need for it. And this is the section that we're gonna be working with. Uh, for the shifter, you're gonna have to do away with a couple things. Uh, for example, this little tunnel right there, as this is gonna have the shifter come in through the bottom, sit on the bottom, get bolted up, and then have the shift lever coming through here. Now this is important. If you're doing a K-Series and an automatic Integra and using the underbody hybrid shifter, it's a great shifter. You keep interior and everything, but there's an extra step that you have to do, which is removing this area that goes under the car that has the shift cable passed through it and i gotta tell you this took up about 45 minutes of my time right now between getting the old exhaust off i had to take it off because it's going in the trash anyway as well as uh drilling out the spot welds you can see all the spots right there and those are easy to to take a look at there's plenty of tools online or you can use a big drill bit 
But essentially what you want to do is get rid of all the spot welds right here. And then the ones on the back, you can do it from the bottom. Um, this thing hangs in this location, I believe in this orientation or it might be, yeah, just, just like that. Um, and it has basically a tunnel for the shift cable, the OEM shift selector, uh, the stock cable to go through and it keeps it um, basically in the right path. Now with this box, this whole rectangle piece will actually go under the car. So this needs to have a clear path for it to sit underneath. Um, so that's necessary to basically bang out. So I took all the spot welds out by drilling them out. And then with a big pry bar, I just pried it off until it kind of fell off. That's a little jagged right here. It's not the prettiest work, but all things considered, I think it came out pretty good. Back to the shifter side of things, we have a whole bunch of goodies here from Hybrid Racing. Like we mentioned, we have the no-cut box right here. This goes under the interior and everything, as well as the underbody uh, cover for the bottom of the shifter, the Hybrid Racing shift cables, a shift knob, and a shift knob collar so we can keep that OEM boot in place, as well as the top piece of that shifter. Uh, now the whole assembly here is gonna be super simple to install. We already showed you guys the interior stuff that needs to come apart and that little piece that we took off for automatic. And for the bottom of this shifter, it's super, super simple. And um, I'll show you this right here. There's a couple small threaded sections right there, 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 and there. And that would be what's associated to the holes in this cover plate. And they're held in by small Allen key bolts. These are all provided along with the washers, of course. But what you're gonna do is take this plate off and you're gonna locate four spots on the chassis. Now, if it's an automatic, you'll have to make the new holes for this where the automatic would normally get drilled if you're doing a five-speed conversion with B-Series. But if you have a manual car, this is gonna go exactly where the OEM stabilizer bar mounts up and you can just use those pre-existing holes and then line up the fronts. For our case, we're gonna have to do a little bit more work by just locating that and then doing the fronts. But this section right here is already a threaded portion. So an M8 by 125 thread can go right into there from the top of the chassis into the bottom since this is gonna go under the chassis. And then for these, since it's an automatic chassis, we'll have to bolt and nut it, but it'll be perfectly sat in the exhaust tunnel underneath the car. I gotta say, this thing does look pretty gorgeous. It has a nice tag on the side of it. And the bottom side of it is very, very simple and easy to understand. You have your side to side lever as well as your forward and back throw. Um, and that's easy to look right there. It has a very nice strong spring right here. So you have good feedback. And in my opinion, if you are gonna be using this shifter in a car that's an OEM function and look, I would keep the OEM detent springs since this already gives you a really nice side to side and notchy feedback. It's a really, really nice shifter without having to do anything to the transmission. If you're gonna do a race oriented build or something you'll be shifting quickly, unlike what we have going on right here, then I'd recommend going with their aftermarket shifter that goes in top of the chassis and has a more aggressive uh, adjustability. Although this one, you can still adjust the throw and all. There's a couple different points, as you can see right here, um, adjustment points for where the cable goes on and it lets you set it higher if you'd like, or you can keep it at that low spot right there. And on the hybrids online install sheet, will, which I'll also link here, um, you guys can see all the different specifications for it. Up in the exhaust tunnel, you can see I'm kind of holding it up into place. And like we mentioned, this is gonna sit right in that area right there, that little void. And um, since we need to drill out those holes, you can kind of see right there. Um, it's gonna be kind of awkward to do it underneath the car, but luckily on the inside, there's kind of uh, two pre-designated spots that we can go ahead and drill. And then we can do the front holes right there. You can see it's bare. And then right in the front, you can see that's why we had to cut that um, little tunnel out of the way because we needed the room for that shifter to sit nice and flush. So we're just getting kind of a rough point of view of where it's gonna sit. And that thick rubber gasket is what's gonna keep all the air from coming in on the gaps. And then that metal shield is gonna go covering this whole section right there to hold everything nice in place. All right, here's that section that we need to drill out. And Honda, when they built these cars, they had um, basically a similar chassis made and you can still see the holes where it would be. Uh, now it's just a piece of sheet metal and we're gonna drill out basically the center of these pre um, stamp spots and although there's not a nut in there like it would in the manual transmission version we're still going to utilize those holes so just try to get the center as good as you can right there and then we'll be good to go with those locations 
Before we put the shifter box for the final mounting in the car, we went ahead and attached cables. Now, if you're using OEM cables, you have to do this method off the car. With the aftermarket hybrid racing cable, since there is adjustability in various spots, you can actually do this on the car, but it's not as comfortable. So I prefer to just do this right here. Um, now, these are side specific, so make sure you have the side to side cable, obviously on the side to side. And this only goes one way on the transmission. It's easy to tell if you wanna just check it. And then obviously you have the front and back throw have that cable correct right there. So there's a little clip that goes. And like I was saying about the adjustments, these right here would be the shortest throw possible if you wanted to do that. And then we have it on the lowest setting right here, which makes it the longest throw. Um, it's really up to your preference at that point. We want the car to shift as close to OEM as possible. So we want a longer throw, um, which is completely up to your preference, like I said. There's also locking nuts here for adjustment on the cable ends. We just went ahead and locked those at where it's at right now. And if in the future we feel we need to do some slack movement or add a little more or less, then we can always change that play right there with those adjustments. It's as easy as taking the access panel off. Those holes were drilled out perfectly as well as the back ones and everything is mocked up right now. And um, the cables are roughly put under the car into the trans, but we did notice one thing. If you're working with an Integra that still has a sway bar, you're gonna have to lower the sway bar down, basically disconnect it from both sides on the mounting bracket here, as well as on the lower control arm, just to give some slack because the area between the subframe and the body is very, very tight. And I'll show you a better demonstration right here. So you have one cable there, other cable right there, body and subframe along that area is where the subframe um, sway bar brace goes. And this is just gonna get sandwiched within it. It's gonna be a tight spot, but I'm gonna do my best to make sure it doesn't bind the cables and the cables still have nice slack moving forward. Um, I did not have the OEM bracket for the shift cable holders, uh, but a buddy of mine, Wally, um, he actually had a couple of extra uh, K-series parts and he actually gave us this. So it's just a K-tune uh, cable bracket. I prefer to go with an OEM one just to have that nice, perfect OEM look as well as functionality. But man, thank you, Wally, for letting me get this. I really appreciate it and um, it's working good. There's two settings on this one and I just have it on the regular OEM style. The back settings would be for like the K-tune race cables and we obviously don't have that this is like an oem replacement by hybrid and um, it's going to work perfect like that we're at a really good spot right now i have it fully bolted in and you can see that this shifter is absolutely butter every gear goes in great and um, although this isn't getting used right now i just wanted to mock it up we opted for a gold hybrid shift knob and it just gives it that perfect touch um, i think we're gonna do some gold accents in the engine bay and being it's a purple car those two colors just go really really nice together uh, but yeah this can literally just stay off until we get a shift boot and we'll be able to have that full interior essentially what this does is rides underneath the uh, shift knob and then you can attach your shift boot nice and easily to that and it gives it that perfect oem uh, feeling to it and it just makes everything a lot nicer. Um, before we actually do the final mounting of the interior things, there are a few mods that we need to do to this plug. Essentially, the plug that we took out on the other side of it, which will be somewhere over there with the OEM Prindle switch and stuff. There's a couple wires that need to get bridged together and I'll put a quick photo right here and it'll describe it exactly. And we'll probably just do that off camera since it's pretty simple. But I wanna mock up real quick how the center console is gonna look with that new shifter in place. And I gotta say, this thing goes in butter to everything. I really love it. And before I forget, I need to do two things. This plate needs to go back up under the car to uh, give that dust cover effect for the bottom of the shifter. And obviously you just feed your cables through there. And I also need to um, attach the sway bar again. I'm just gonna lift it back into space and make sure that the cables are still routed in a nice area where it's between the subframe, um, the subframe brace or the sway bar and the chassis itself. Don't mind the carpet. We still have to do a quick detail on that, but we got it vacuumed out at least and the center console back into place. And I love the OEM fitment of everything. You can tell that once we have the shift boot on here, you could even run it with a stock shifter and you would not know, like a stock shift knob. You would literally not know from how clean this is. And everything goes in literally butter, six speed right there, no problem and reverse with absolutely no problem. It still doesn't even hit the trim right here. And this is still having that extra bit of trim from an automatic. You can see how much extra space is right there. And then if you wanted to get fancy to your driver driving style, this little 
bolt right there gets pulled out and you can literally adjust the height and then this bolt on this side gets pulled out and you can adjust the tilt of that secondary arm right there so you can really really hone it to how you prefer it we're getting to a good spot with the build i think in the next couple days of work maybe not timeline days but next couple work days that we're actually doing stuff on it it can start so there honestly isn't a lot it's just a lot of little tedious things now um, but yeah, that wraps up the video for today. If you guys aren't already subscribed, make sure to subscribe and use the notification bell so you can see more of this build as well as the race car, which is right out there. Um, we'll catch you guys on the next video. And like always, thanks for watching. Bye.